Podcast starts now. Wow. Welcome back to Stradio Lab, America's favorite podcast. Um, we are coming at you, and I'm sorry to date the episode, but there's no way around it. Date this the episode. Is gonna, this is going to come out in, you know, a month or two, but it is Oscar Sunday. And it's, the Oscars are taking place mere blocks from where we are right now. Mere blocks from where we are. And how, you know, how do you feel in relation to that? You know, it's interesting. I've been feeling this way a lot while during this LA visit where I'm kind of like, I feel too close to it all. <laughs> I'm seeing billboards for shows that I think don't exist. Yeah. Like I think they are, because you know how sometimes they'll put billboards up close to celebrities' houses just so they think their movie is being promoted more than it actually yeah, is? Yeah. I think there's something like that happening. I saw a billboard for a show. Well, first of all, our producer sent us uh, an image that she took, a picture, one could say a photograph, <laughs> of a billboard that said, Deal or no deal island. Yeah. Fake. Fake. That is not real. That seems Why fake. would you need to go to an island to do deal or no deal? It doesn't deal? matter where it is. It's in a it's, studio. It's on a set. And how can you even make that competitive? There's like suitcases hidden everywhere. I mean, now I'm sort of on board. Well, now that's that a different game, game though. Well, that's a different game. It's not deal or no deal. On I mean, wait, here, I saw another one for Farmer Needs a Wife. That's a show. You better believe it's four farmers. <laughs> they need wives. <laughs> There's four it's of them. It's called Farmer Needs a Wife. Wow. Maybe it's Farmer Wants a Wife, but it's intentionally, you know, the syntax is intentionally, you know, stupid, ironically. Like no, it's no. Farmer Wants a Wife. Sure, farmer sure, needs a sure. Wife. I think, I think you're pointing to something smart, which is that the geographic closeness almost makes me feel like I'm a part of it in a way that's like not true. Like totally. obviously, you know. Oh, interesting. Because I have the opposite feeling where I was like, I feel so out so at a distance because I'm not part of everything happening around me. It's like when you're in Midtown, everyone's walking around in a suit and you're so aware of the fact that you are, you know, wearing um, last night's going out dress. <laughs> no, I feel like, oh, the Oscars are happening over there. Like, yeah, they're my coworkers. Sure. Like, I'm like, oh, I relate to these people so much. Like, yeah, like I, my, like Misha's in town, his dad is in town. And I'm sort of like, those are the Oscars. That happens pretty much every weekend around here. Well, you know what? Actually, I had a similar, so I was at John's house a couple of nights ago and then, and it turns out he's going to the Oscars. Oh. I was like, oh, so now that I... It's just sort of like in the same way that you'd be like, oh, I'm going to Union Hall for a show. People, some people are going to the Oscars. That makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. When does it stop? When does what stop? When does it stop being, uh, who's going to get like the presidential award of freedom? And oh, I'm going to be see, like, see, oh see, yeah, see. my friend got the presidential award of freedom. Yes, yes, yes. You know, it, it, hmm, it which past higher. guest? <laughs> <laughs> is that, what would you say is like the peak of... Um, not to be toxic, but... Who's our most successful guest? No, 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 no. We're not saying that. <laughs> who's what our is, least successful who's guest? Who's our least successful guest? <laughs> what is your peak of, like, the highest honor you could get? The highest mm, Olympic gold medal. Wow. Yeah, how about you? Well, you, you have a lot of work to do on that. Front. I mean... Because you're not even in that industry. That's why I'm getting all these experimental surgeries. <laughs> that's right, that's right. You're getting a lot. I heard gossip about someone, I won't say who, who is banned <laughs> from all hospitals in New York because they kept getting too many elective surgeries. Who? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Wait, you said somebody said something stupid and you were going to dox them before we started Okay, recording. this is really controversial. And and then I have a theory that is inappropriate, but I do need to share with okay. you. Okay, we also do need to bring in our guests. Of course. Place. these <laughs> We're are already planning the next four things we're going to do. Okay. Um, all right. I, and then we should get lunch. I'm, I'm, oh, yeah. Oh, no, we're getting lunch. Um, I'm intermittent fasting, actually. So mm. see you at 4 p.m. See you at 4. I, Okay. Apologies if the person I'm talking to ever finds this podcast. I don't think they will, but I just have to say that. You know when sometimes you have an L.A. interaction that is truly out of, like, a movie that is making fun of L.A.? Yeah. So I was talking to someone. This is someone who works in the entertainment industry, not to brag. Huge. In an, in an executive role. Oh. Okay. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and so... He was trying to say, he was talking about like a, a, some heyday of TV or something. He was like, you know, the NBC lineup in the 90s, something. And he goes, oh, he, he wanted to say that was the creme de la creme of, you know, television. And he goes, I mean, that was the pied a terre. <laughs> okay, this is, this is where it gets complicated because what is... <laughs> What is that one? Well, pied terre is like, I think pied terre is like having an apartment in a different city that you don't always use. Like so, I, we have a pied terre in Paris. This is where it gets complicated because you said that, you saying that almost sounded like a New Yorker cartoon. Oh like, can you believe God. he thought creme de la creme was a pied terre? Okay. <laughs> 
Oh my I gosh. I cannot believe he you. He thought the creme de la creme was up here. I've told this story to four people. They've all laughed. And here I am being dragged on my own podcast for being a coastal, a different coastal elite. <laughs> It's too you you were you were too New York. This person was too LA. I can't believe this. <laughs> I've never flopped so hard in my life. I was trying to. Um, I was really trying. I, I just didn't know what it meant. I, I okay, what's to, your story? Uh, well, now you're gonna flop it on purpose because you want revenge. Um, and now, okay, this is complicated. Mm-hmm. Um, our guest today is, you know, I mostly see in the offices of a, of a corporate entity. Yes. So this feels uh, weird to bring up, but. HR doesn't extend to here, so I'm going to say it. Having a catheter in, which I still do, we're still in the catheter era. And that has already been addressed with the guest. This is not the person I'm concerned about. Okay. So I've already addressed the catheter that exists. But I have to tell you, while it's happening, the side effect of having a catheter in (laughs) is people everywhere are asking about your dick. People are like... Literally, Kathy Griffin asked you about your dick and said the word dick while asking you. And then, you know, like... Family, yeah, everyone's yeah, yeah. sort of like, how's your dick? Right. And in this way that especially with men, I feel like is like, finally, I can talk about my dick in the same way that straight guys do. And this <laughs> like, like was a catheter. It's sort of like, uh, like, oh, man. Yeah, it sucks when your dick has weird stuff in it. Ew. Like guys <laughs> love to like relate about dick stuff in a way uh-huh. that like normally they can't because yeah. they're like, well, you get a different thing. Wait, so have you been talking to straight guys a lot about this? I feel like like, OK, I'm mostly thinking about like <laughs> Misha's dad. Oh, sure. Misha's You're dad like, is finally I can relate to my well, father the way that Yeah, he's sort of like like everyone sort of um and even yeah people are, some straight guys are like oh man that must suck because yeah. our dicks right yeah, yeah and yeah. it's very like i haven't been part of that brotherhood sure. in a while we do different things with our dicks than straight guys do of course but this is actually something that is more similar the most similar thing we could possibly do is we could both have catheters put in <laughs> theoretically yeah and I think the the pain is relatable and I think yeah. the sort of like and then the like reminiscing on like what dicks do like they're like of man because normally I love my dick right and it's like right, right. so true mm-hmm. and it feels very it's like horny removed from sexuality yes and it's like that and so that's sort of my um, new theory is it's unlocked something do you think that a way to combat homophobia would be a sort of elective catheters for all so that straight men could relate to gay men? I actually think the government should mandate it, as always. <sighs> the government needs to actually step it up in a big way. In a huge way. Let's see how they do with the Oscars. Get out and vote, you all. <laughs> you all, right. all. Should we bring in our illustrious guest? I think we should. Um, I'm Well, I, you know, I think you should do the honors. I mean, I don't even know what to say. Um, today we are joined by the Taylor Tomlinson. Hi. <laughs> Welcome, Taylor. Hi. <laughs> Can I just say, please, the most confident thing I've ever seen doing an intro to the podcast in front of your silent guest. <laughs> that is, I mean. Thank you for bringing this up. We're actually really good at doing it. <laughs> You're really intros. good at it. I mean, it's crazy. We've debated over, over the years, yeah. like, do we like record this ahead of time do we record yeah, this after like most people do like in a normal thing <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but i actually really think people need to understand the tone that we're I coming agree. in with and i really oh, like I sort of i like and i was doing this with you sort of like peeking at the guest being like she's laughing <laughs> yeah <laughs> i know but i can't make noise i know so i had I to like really exaggerate well it's those also movements. it's like a social experiment where sometimes guests there are some guests not you that are so like triggered by not hearing the sound of their own voice that they can't help it and they do oh, keep and they like just butting jump in, in. Mm-hmm. They jump so this in. was a test and i it's passed a test. it's a test and you passed yeah. okay great um yeah. and yeah we were even deba- sometimes we'll have like not to keep talking about kathy griffin but yesterday we were like was well, kathy griffin too famous for us to do that with her right. but we did speaking it. of your most successful guest <laughs> yeah, i was yeah. like well i know it's not me <laughs> <laughs> it oh was uh, yeah and the way that I don't feel self-conscious about it anymore. I don't either. That's what's so impressive yeah. is you don't come across. I would like I've done podcasts and yeah. I would never do that. <laughs> yeah, I'd be totally. like, we're gonna record one later. It's fine, and we're just gonna talk about how great you are. Anyway, let's just get into <laughs> so it. So many people tell us I would never do that. <laughs> yeah, I've actually like, heard no, that so I many hear times. you. No, I, I loud and clear. Um, <laughs> it went well. It wasn't no, uncomfortable. Yeah. It was entertaining. I'm not criticizing. Mm-hmm. I'm actually in awe of the well, choice. Thank you very wow, much. beautiful. It yeah. just is a testament to how comfortable we feel with you. 
But it isn't though, because it's every episode. <laughs> I'm like, that was a nice try. <laughs> that was really nice. Well, it also it could be interpreted as like a insult. Like we feel it's like, oh, oh it's yeah. good. It's natural that she's silent. Like, <laughs> I, did she speak? <laughs> Wait, Taylor, if you had to, would you watch Deal or No Deal Island or Farmer Needs a Wife? I've seen that also. Oh, I've seen oh, that. Billboard. No, okay. not the show. Oh my I was god. Like, oh god. Can you imagine <laughs> if I was like, that's my favorite show? Yeah. I love it. I've been seeing the Farmer one, but I've seen the Deal or No Deal Island, yeah. and the host is like a, a is it a famous actor oh is it i forget oh, who oh, it is wait but i remember looking at it and i'm like oh it's that guy damn it well i'm I not gonna look it up We're not i should know up. every game show host by now yeah i should yeah. know right. i should have you're in the biz wait, i'm in the biz literally, we actually shouldn't make fun of it because it's a peer of yours it's i'm yeah. trying to get to yeah. deal or no deal oh, island I mean, this is a stepping stone after yeah. Yeah. Island would be literally a like the dream Oh, of course. Yeah. I mean, it's clearly somebody just wanted to go on vacation and yeah. wanted to make it tax deductible. And so they're yeah. like, deal or no deal, island. And yeah. wanted it to be the easiest game possible. Yeah. Is it yeah. this briefcase or this briefcase? Paid for the, oh my God, who is it? It's Joe, John, Joe Manganiello? Yes. Whoa. Sofia Vergara's ex. <gasps> oh. Drama. <laughs> <laughs> I'm suddenly a gay E! News host. <laughs> Sofia Vergara's ex is hosting <laughs> Deal or No Deal Island <laughs> months after the divorce. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. He's hot though. No. You know what his big thing is? He loves Dungeons and Dragons. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Did you see that movie? Nope. That I movie, did actually. It was so good. It actually really? was good. It was great. It was funny. Oh, I think he was in it. He probably yeah. was. I don't remember. You wouldn't remember Why do you know that that's his big thing? Um, because of a podcast I listened to. Not this one. Wow. We would not break news like that here. No, no, no. I don't remember him being in it. Really? But, yeah, no, and I saw either. it a few times. Oh, okay. Really? I like, loved that movie. Wait, why? What's I thought it was it? so good. You, I just thought it was so funny. Obviously, Dungeons and Dragons. No, I knew nothing about Dungeons and Dragons wow. at all. There's like one part. You don't have to be a fan okay. to enjoy that no, movie. You don't. There's one part where you're like, they're making fun of the game right now. Right. But it's obvious to okay. a non player, and then someone who is a player of the game was like, right there they did it you know they did a great job i was i'm gonna watch it i was very jet lagged and i just like wanted to go see a movie and i looked up reviews for stuff because i thought it was going to be terrible i remember the trailer came out and i was like what we're doing board games now and then i saw it and i was like i stand corrected this is damn the best comedy i've seen in years do you feel that you have more respect for um game show hosts now that you are in their community honestly yes (laughs) I mean, it's, it seems like such a difficult job. But yes. Yeah. Not that ours is a real game show at all. Like, I can't yeah. imagine managing people's feelings as they are winning and losing yeah. That would be great tough. And it's money. like real people that flew in. Yeah. yeah. This is comedians. This is Rare. not real people. Yeah. We're all no, no, no. being dumb. You know? We're, yeah. People are trying to win handfuls of almonds. It is scary, though, when sometimes you're like, oh, that person actually wanted to win. I'm like, oh, yeah, like because not everyone is that. And then when you do get that and they don't and you're like, they're going to be upset for like yeah. 12 hours. Oh, I made sure Tig won. <laughs> I was like, Tig Nutra was going to be upset. Tig was actually very competitive. Yeah. In that a way. That does not surprise me. I did not see coming. Yeah. And so I was like, let's make sure Tig wins. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. You heard it here first. It's rigged. It's rigged. <laughs> it's rigged. Um, it's tigged. It's tigged. <laughs> <laughs> Take or no take island. Woo. Okay. What are you going to say? No, I, I've also been like, um, now I like look at all, like any talk show. I'm like, oh, the work, the work that you guys do. Oh, like, I'm yeah. like, this is insane. Yeah. No, uh, I feel like I have probably the easiest job on the show. I think you guys have the hardest job by far. Like, I don't think that's true. Really? Who do you think is the hardest job? I feel like you Maybe do. graphics. People keep telling me that and I'm like, I show up and I get, someone else dresses me, someone else brushes my hair, I read, Everyone's like so impressed I can read a teleprompter. I'm like, I didn't write any of this. Like, <laughs> but you are good at reading is, it. Thank like, you so much. <laughs> and I'm, not, you are you are very good at reading. It's, thank it's, you. It's very impressive. And <laughs> even like, uh, but for me, it's more like the mood. I've actually want to talk to you about this because I, I know that's why I wanted to do this podcast, and I wanted to meet you, of course, George. Of course, but. I was like, I never get any time to talk to anybody because yeah. like we go into that read through in the morning and you guys are working before that. So I don't want to come in and be like, hey, guys, want to talk? <laughs> You're like, we're kind of in the middle of something <laughs> trying to make you look good tonight. And then it's like this big read through where it's everyone. And so even like trying to make jokes is very intimidating because when they don't land, you're like, yeah. that was in front of everyone I work with. And then like everybody's just 
prepping guests and like I'm in hair and makeup and it's just it moves so quickly. It's there's not much downtime. Yeah. Um, but I feel like you the it seems very hard. Like I would struggle in your position with like maintaining a normal mood. Like <laughs> oh yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> like you are like you have to be like on with people kind of all day. Yeah yeah. I mean it helps that everyone who works on the show is so great. Like yeah. Uh, that's a big reason I wanted to do the show is like everybody just kind of top to bottom is lovely to work with and it's nice to come in and see everyone. But yeah, I mean, that is the thing that I was most worried about and has been the biggest challenge is just like based on I have social anxiety. So like figuring out like when to go in and bother people, when to not bother people and say, hi, thanks for doing this show. Cause they're obviously working really hard with the writers so that they go out and they feel like they have a lot of material to go off of because we've seen when people aren't prepared how well that goes. Um, some people love to riff. Some people uh, love to riff. Uh, there's really only been like one person yeah. who came in and wasn't ready. Um, but otherwise, everyone's everyone's pretty prepared. It's, but yeah. it's just like, yeah, it's it's interesting to... I'm really glad Marianne's been booking people who know each other. Yeah. Because that really helps when they yeah. all don't know each other and then they don't know me. It's just like for random disconnected people being like do you think this is a good reddit so do you think this is a real subreddit do you think hillary it's also ankles are a community on reddit it's so it's supposed to be like we're all friends so when there's yeah. so clearly no connective tissue yeah. it, it's kind of glaring yeah and, and i do agree she's doing a good job at that yeah it feels so nice when that is like oh we're all a, a friend group who are your three dream guests as like at the same time yeah the Jonas Brothers. Yeah. Because I feel like they know each other. It'll be mm -hmm. fun. But also there could be some tension. Mm, the end just yeah. like that, ladies. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yes. That would be huge, actually. That would be so good. Oh, and it's perfect because Samantha won't do it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. That's perfect. She'll yeah. send in a video yeah. that we can play on the big screen. Yeah, exactly. But then she'll be paid more than everyone else. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and styled by Patricia Field. <laughs> wow. That's do a Do you have pitch. a dream guest? Now I'm trying to think. I'm like... The Heim sisters. Mm. Oh, oh, they would be they great. They would be great. They actually are local. We should yeah. put them tomorrow. They've we already should. been on camera. They'll definitely do it. <laughs> it's so funny how, what a weird coincidence is that I, so I used to very uh, briefly, I worked on the show called Game Show that was hosted by Matt Rogers and, and our friend Dave Mazzoni. And it was literally like a fake game show where comedian guests like did fake challenges to win fake prizes. Mm -hmm. So it's so strange that we both have had these jobs that have like the exact same tone and like we would book like it would be like you know Nicole Byer and Joel Kim Booster and they yeah. already know each other and they have chemistry and blah blah and she can like make fun of him and blah blah blah, blah. Um, but it is true that sometimes people you think are going to be good are not <laughs> yeah yeah I mean pretty much everyone we've had I think has been yeah. good and like down to yeah do it I've mostly been impressed because even um, you know I'm a, I'm a hater um, right. I, first and, and I foremost. get that from you yeah yeah. <laughs> you're from New York uh, of course I've got to be a little cynical <laughs> you know I, I, we need to talk about our evolving identities as haters I'm yeah. really trying to not be one and the other day I watched something that was so bad that I was like, I'm going to become like a cyber bull. I'm going to join like <laughs> subreddits and actually like make people suffer, like suffer. <laughs> I was like, I've ho been holding off for so long. I've really tried to go into everything with an open mind. And I'm like, enough. Yeah. No, I'm actually turning the opposite. I'm like, the LA is like seeping in. Yeah. I'm becoming like, like, you know, it was a good effort no matter what. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm sort of like, like there are people that come on the show where I'm like, have no connection to and honestly have like a b unfounded disdain where I'm like, <sighs> Who do yeah. I think they are? Well, and then I'm like, like, but I'm always impressed. And I'm like, oh, I'm an asshole. They're actually really funny and nice. We're very yeah. sensitive to people <laughs> yeah. being like, you know, for lack of a better better word, like corny or overly sincere or overly earnest. I feel like our entire 20s, we were like making fun of people like that. Yeah. And then you meet them and you're like, there's reason you're successful and you have a big career and you, and you are able to like engage an audience because you like know what you're doing. Meanwhile, we're at home being like, idiot <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. it's also really easy to be a hater when you're in new york and yeah. like away from it all well yes like now you're like at a party with that person that you've talked shit about forever I, and you're like huh yeah so right. this changes things a little bit Did yeah you once i make eye contact yeah. <laughs> yeah and they're nice to you yeah do you feel like you went through a hater phase no because 
I've just always been terrified of everybody yeah. and so worried that I was going to accidentally offend anyone or upset anyone or hurt anyone's feelings. And I started really young and I got lucky, I think, in this business really early. So I was always operating from a place of, I don't deserve anything and yeah. I'm sorry that I got anything right. <laughs> and I'm sorry I'm here and I'm sorry I'm alive and I'm sorry I'm breathing and yeah. it should have been you. Uh, so I didn't really have that. And especially like, I definitely had people when I was younger that maybe I was a little more, a little quicker to go like, that person sucks, or, like yeah. privately. Sure. But as I get older, the more I'm just, I really am like, everybody's doing their best. And like, even yeah. if it's not, it's not for me. That's, yeah, that's what people love to say out here. They go, it's not for me. Yeah. But, you know, good for them. Like, that's kind of the meanest thing. Yeah. I had yeah. such a righteous, like, I feel like when I was younger, I was very much like, it is morally important to be critical because we have right. to like ha like weed out the bad stuff to have like a healthy culture <laughs> right. and to have like good you know to have like higher quality discourse and higher quality art and like there shouldn't it's literally like a bad thing to take up space with bad stuff yeah right and now I'm like, it's a miracle anything gets made. <laughs> I yes. mean, say that. It's also like, I think now that I know more about the processes of yeah. things getting made, I'm like, the amount of time it takes, the amount of people you have to go through, the amount of filters inherently that will happen. Yes. But also the reason why, uh, the reason why so much bad stuff exists is because it was greenlit by people that are not, it's not like any of the artists' right. fault. Right. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, well then your mandate is to literally create Farmer needs a wife. Yeah. And it's literally not the fault of the people making Farmer Needs a Wife. It's like someone in the top was like, that's funny. Write that down. Yeah. Yeah. It's a job. Yeah. I think. And you know, the longer you're in this business, you know how many cooks there are in the kitchen yeah. on anything. So any bad movie you see, you're like, I, I wonder if that would have been good when it was just a script. Yeah. I wonder if we just read this aloud in a room. Maybe this would have been awesome, totally. but right. so many people wrecked it <laughs> with all kinds of casting choices and producing choices. Like, it's all... And just the only thing I really hate is when people don't work hard or they say, I'm a writer, I'm an actor, oh. I'm a comedian. I hate when people say I'm a stand-up and they don't do stand-up. Yes. Like, yeah, I, that's I the, that's yeah. the stuff that I'm like, I can't. We were talking about this recently because there's um, a subsect of like I don't know if I can go into this gay guys who are just sort of like funny oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, then, oh. and then they're sort of like but what it, like and they'll be like I'm a comedian and sort of like yeah, yeah you're like all gay guys are kind of funny yeah they're yeah. We're all comedians <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it was like we and how we sort of feel the urge to gatekeep that in, yeah. in, in a way that's like both childish and well it's um, also like true. what counts as yeah. work, what counts as work is confusing right now because I was always you know, I started doing comedy in Boston, which is so traditional and so like, you're yeah. going to get up, you're going to have a punch, set up in a punchline. So I was, I think I really internalized that and was like, unless you are getting up, doing, you know, 15 open mics a week and doing set up punchline jokes, that doesn't count as comedy. And now it's like, well, if someone, I don't know, if someone's like sp spending hours editing some video or something, who's to say they're not working harder than I am? <laughs> right. <laughs> like yeah. writing like one thing in a notebook <laughs> on the subway on the way to a show. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> I always hated when there was any sort of uh, like alt comic disdain for road comics totally, because yeah. I've always been a road comic and I was always. But you're a good one is the difference. <laughs> I mean, but maybe not always. Like I hope so. But that's I was of that. Yes. Of like. I don't even think you're a comedian if you're not on the road every weekend. Right, like, right, I was right. definitely like a fucking really one funny. of these guys. I, and I was the alt comic that was like, if you're on the road, you're like a hack. Exactly. Like, I was fully totally. that. Yeah, which was so annoying to me. And I am, I was definitely more in the camp of like, but could they do 45 in Des Moines? <laughs> like, I was yeah. much more <laughs> over there. I mean, and I like so many alt comics. Like, yeah. I think they're so brilliant and cool. And now I'm like, there's room for everybody <laughs> and whatever your approach is. I think that's great. Yeah. And then you just learn and, you know, alt comics were multi hyphenates, and we have one. We have one skill, yeah. and it's just stand up out here. I, I think that is so. I think that it's funny to be the alt comic that's sort of a hater, and then through time, you just inherently get more traditional, for lack of a better yeah. word. And like, so now there's people that like I'm sure are like more alt than me that are like, well, Sam, the hack, like the, the sellout. Oh, sellout, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And, like, I don't even so want to know what standard. is going on right now yeah. in Ridgewood. And it's like you have no idea how I used to pour water on myself, yeah. like. <laughs> 
just to pour water on myself. I did at a damn JFL audition. Um, That's right, you did. Yeah, they did were they that? were mad at me. Really? You sort of have a history of I've, doing the things you're not supposed to do at JFL auditions. The way I my very first JFL audition, I bombed harder than I've ever bombed in my whole life. I did so I was doing like I was all so I was doing like characters and stand up and sort of like yeah. going back and forth and it was sort of like I guess I'll do the characters one but they weren't like tight like little UCB style characters they were like kind of wild and like I had this character called the girl who touches her cup too much and says million dollars <laughs> <laughs> so I would have like a, a glass like a martini glass and I would like just say three words and be like like you me Acapulco million dollars <laughs> and then I would sip and spill and go <laughs> and so I would you. just like keep going and and like just three things million dollars and then spill in a different way yeah and they were furious at me they were like why are you wasting our time like it was I went yeah. first like it was just like they have never been more upset at a person in their lives yeah and it's, I it's crazy that having a sense of joy and a sense of whimsy is criminalized in this country <laughs> I, I think back on that and I'm still like, I bet there's still people that hate me for that. I think about that all the time. The things that you have done, you know, that I'm, in the moment you're like, oh, that was an embarrassing night. But there are people that like put you on a list. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, and that's what's so hard about, I mean, New York, L.A., like wherever you are doing stand up comedy of any kind is like it's easy to go nobody's thinking about you mm -hmm. like nobody's judging you everyone's judging you everyone is thinking <laughs> about you and one weird interaction will decide what that person thinks of you for 100%. years yeah. until you're at a party and you make eye contact with them and you say nice jacket and they're like oh I guess they're nice <laughs> yeah. but they w like it will be like that someone didn't shake my hand at the comedy store three years ago I still think about it <laughs> and I don't know if they're mad and I don't know if it was just a germs thing it probably was but <laughs> I'm still You're like there about during it. lockdown. You're like, when, when's my set? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely 2021. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it stresses me out. And the funny thing about alt comedy too is like, it is, it is the stuff that like other comics would laugh at because it's so, well, you know. Yes. Mm -hmm. But this is the trap is that you find yourself then as an alt comedian dare yeah. I say performing for other comedians more so than you're performing for the audience yes and I, I actually like this is one of the big things I've had to like unlearn I feel like in yeah. the last few years it's just like it's actually disrespectful to the audience <laughs> to do that yeah because a great bit that will work everywhere comedians aren't gonna laugh yeah hysterically at that they're gonna go that's fucking great yes. that's yeah, what yeah. they're yes, gonna do totally. and that's you know I know I should we do our first Let's segment? Do our first se I have so much more to say about this, but we <laughs> I know we sometimes get into these vortexes of inside baseball. I actually talk, and I, we're like, I, where's I really, Mark Maron? I know we do go Mark Maron mode and I do like it. I like it's it like fun, but it yeah, we can't go too far. We need to, Matthew said we need to have Mark Maron on the podcast and his topic needs to be Mark Maron. Oh, well, that's genius. That's I think he would do it. Good. Okay. He did your show. My show? The, is he not? Did he not? Do I think I did. his. Oh, yes, he did. He did yes, 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 yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I don't think that's like the same great. as coming on this podcast. No, no, but, no, no, to be clear, <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. This isn't on CBS. No, 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 no what I'm saying, what I'm saying is like he's, I don't know, doing things that are in his pod. I, ag agreed. It's more he prestigious. He might if you went to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But Maybe. you know what I mean? I feel like for so long it was like he would, like, I feel like he has WTF. He has his specials. To me, it's like a big step that he went and did a game show like he went and did sure. a game show yeah right and was great on he great was on. really yeah good. he texted me afterward and was like see i can be silly and i was, I was like, very you were impressed great. he's yeah. very silly i mean talk about a true alt you know legend alt legend, yeah, alt legend. but was on the road every weekend in clubs. True. so you it's know true. it's both sides yep the true centrist there is a yeah. lot to think about <laughs> okay yeah. taylor our i'll first... see you in des moines <laughs> i'll see you yeah for real oh oh god Okay, our first segment is called Straight Shooters, uh -huh. and in this segment, we're going to ask you a series of rapid-fire questions to gauge your familiarity with and complicity in mm. straight culture. It's basically this thing or this other thing, and the only rule is you can't ask any follow-up questions about how the game works, or we will scream at you in a way that will violate all yeah. HR policies. You're probably thinking now, wait, I have a question. Don't ask. <laughs> Don't ask. Sit with that. <laughs> Sit with that discomfort. It's all about sitting with the discomfort. Will you tell me, yeah? Taylor. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, you're right. That's a question. I'm sorry. Okay. You're right. Supporting PBS or suffering from IBS? Supporting PBS. Okay, Taylor. Intimate moments or Entenmann's donuts? Oh. Donuts. Hmm? Regressing into adolescence or obsessing over evanescence? 
regressing into adolescence. <laughs> uh, UCLA or you seem a little gay? Oh. <laughs> uh, UCLA and I'm answering as if I know the rules and I think I know what the rules are almost a question but you no, put no, no, it that was a statement yeah. being self-deprecating on the stage or being eviscerating on the page mm. eviscerating on the page the bible belt the rust belt or the gucci belt ooh bible belt chic <laughs> Having a fully developed frontal lobe or being a bully because you're a homophobe? The second one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> the levees are breaking or the levees are making a new family comedy. I'm, of course, talking about Dan and Eugene. Dan and Eugene. Wow. Wow. Okay, Taylor, we rank our guest performance on a scale of zero to 1,000 doves. I thought that was a good performance. I'm going to say that off the bat. I'm going to say that off the bat I'm as well. sure it definitely is in the... 700 to 1,000 range. Yeah, which not everybody is. Not everybody is. Oh my is. gosh. <laughs> what did Kathy Griffin get? Well, she got 1,100. But <laughs> <laughs> Before she even started, didn't even have to play. <laughs> what do you think? You know, I'm going to say 915 dollars. 950. <gasps> I think that's fair. Wow. It's, yeah. It's, you know, it's an A minus. Okay. You're getting I'll take it. it. You're, you're, you're getting into UPenn. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. I think, and I'm not asking... Yeah, but I think the rules were now you can this, ask questions. It's oh, yeah. is the is the point to pick the straighter thing? The point is basically that there are no rules, and it's sort of like we are doing emotional um, terrorism on our guests, oh. and so they each everyone sort of like settles into it in their own way. Oh, okay. And yeah. so some, you know, you have to tell a story, <laughs> you have to be <laughs> confident. Well, it really is a performance. It's sort of like a Rorschach test of like. It says something about you, which one you pick. Oh, so what does it say about me that I'm like, I have to pick the straightest thing because you said, so here's how complicit I, are you in straight culture? Here's what I think it says. Yeah. It says road comic because you are, because you are like, <laughs> yeah, you were like, how can I, I was like, set up punchline. I yeah. know what it is. That's yeah. so funny. Literally. I couldn't just go and like, this is what I like. Like that's, exactly. but if some people were, do that. If you were some like, some people do that. Bush okay. pouring water on yourself, you would be going oh. in and like picking something we didn't even say. Like picking something you didn't even say. <laughs> Do people do that? No, no one's people that. But see. People will say like neither. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Um, we've had yeah, that no, before. I don't I don't have that sort of confidence. That's or we'll very make fun rare. of us for the for the thing we said rather than just like accepting that we're the authority and picking one. Some people oh, yeah, try no, to I'm do like here. Some people try to do like a bit off yeah, of what we yeah. said and sort of like that's that's actually incorrect. Yeah. That is no. wrong. Oh. Okay. This is supposed to be wow. we did say rapid fire. We did say rapid fire. Oh, that's the other thing is some people don't get the rapid fire part and we'll like really think about it and try to talk through each one and we're like we have eight of these to get yeah. through. <laughs> <laughs> Um, should right. we get into the topic? I'm really excited for this topic, actually. Um, Taylor, please tell us what topic you brought and a little bit about what makes it straight. Um, the topic I brought was rom-coms because, um, think about it, every single one is straight. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Sure. I think it speaks for itself. Um, That's one of my favorite justifications for generally anything is because... Think about it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm like, true. Yeah, it is sort of, <laughs> Yeah, it is crazy Sometimes. to ask you, what is it about rom coms that you think is straight? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think the idea of a rom com is truly like has become nostalgic in the way that like right wing people <laughs> like totally. are nostalgic about like traditional family values. Yes. Like the way people you know, um that new Sydney Sweeney Glenn Powell movie which every, did so well. Which did so, did but so every well. interview it's like, we need to bring back rom coms. Why are they gone? Don't you guys remember Meg Ryan? And it's like, we've now been doing that for longer than rom, rom coms were originally popular. <laughs> yeah. Like we've now been saying we miss rom coms and oh how amazing you know twenty seven dresses was longer than the like Basically, fifteen year Are period. Are people citing twenty seven dresses? Someone as recently, their our best friend one? Stephen, I think, and I liked it. Yeah, I liked no, it. someone was literally like, "That was the last one, and the era ended there. And that oh. was the last great rom com." And I was like, mm. "Oh, interesting. I'd never." I think that might be true about that. But oh, I think it is. Set it up. Set it up. Good. Oh, I love. I've never set seen it. Set it up. Set it up is Glenn Powell before he became before he became big. You know, oh. capital G, capital P. Glenn Tay Powell. Diggs, Lucy Liu. Yes, it's two bo two oh, bosses. Oh, I I remember her. Zoe this Deutsch. One. Yeah. Zoe Deutsch. Okay. Okay. So good. That, that one's very good. That's a good one. But no, they they basically have been releasing them pretty regularly this whole time. But there's just this idea. I understand that it was a little more regular in like the 90s and the 2000s. And also that the stars were bigger there. Like it was literally yeah. Julia Roberts doing it and not, no offense, Zoe Dutoich. Oh, I love her. <laughs> I mean, I wish she had great. been in. I really wish she had been in the new one with Glenn Powell. Because oh, I thought they were so good together. Yeah. 
I know we love Sydney Sweeney, but I don't know if I see her as a rom com lead. She, I love her to death. She yeah. saved my life, of course. But I am <laughs> starting to be like, wait, what? Why? What? Why do I love you again? Yeah, and I, I don't. Yeah, I mean, I hope to God I run into her at a party and can make eye contact. She's and doing a horror movie. Jacket. She, she's doing a horror movie where she plays a nun. Did you know that? I did. It just it's starting to confuse me. The whole vibe. I think she's great in like more dramatic. Yes. Unhinged I kind roles. of agree. She's actually not a comedian. <laughs> no, as it turns out. She would yeah, be terrible knew? at hosting yeah. after midnight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, get her on. Get it was Euphoria between me and Sydney. On. It was between me and Sydney. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I don't know. That movie didn't quite hit for me. That's sort of what I've been hearing. Yeah. I okay, so, but everyone saw it. Yeah. No, everyone saw it. We all saw it. Well, I didn't see it, but so rom coms. Sam. What is your Hater. relationship with rom coms? <laughs> I loved rom coms yeah. growing up. Um when I was complicit in straight culture. Of course. Um but like yeah, as and as an adult I think I'm nostalgic for like a few of them. Like I really like my best friend's wedding. Love my best friend's wedding. Yeah. But it is yeah. a very straight movie. Besides, well, they, you know, they get to have a little gay guy. They do a little gay. <laughs> <laughs> That's rare. They do, they not do all of them sing. Do. They yeah. do sing. That's true. But just the whole premise of her being like, "Oh, actually, I do want that guy," and being in competition with another woman yes, who's much who is younger, like twenty-one, yeah. I, who's a fucking child. Yeah. When you go back and watch it, you're like, "I don't remember this part where she quits school." <gasps> oh my god! I know. Um, I love that one. I love the Meg Ryan ones. Yeah. Um, Meg Ryan, Tom Hanks, can't go wrong. Yes. Can't go wrong. Meg Ryan. Yeah. I, I I'm, yeah, I'm trying to think like the culture around them has changed a lot. In like I'm thinking about like the rom-com like even the words like chick flick mm. used to mean something. Yeah. And now <laughs> Now no one says that in a way where I'm like, what is that saying about well, us? Well, I do think people don't say that because it was decided that it was sexist. <laughs> well, of course. But I think I'm like... But it rhymes. But it, but rhymes. it rhymes. But it rhymes. And I'm more like... But it doesn't mean it's not true. Well, it, <laughs> right. it needs to be reclaimed is the thing. Because Chick it. Flick was... It, so we can have girl dinner, the... but we can't have Chick Flick? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, girl dinner doesn't even rhyme. What, what am I supposed, doing to, what am I supposed to watch while I'm eating my film? Chick <laughs> Flick, well, it was like created by men to be like condescending. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it needs to it needs to come back yeah. as a as an empowerment narrative. And people did take down Girl Dinner after like That's a week true. of it being popular. They're like, That's this true. is an eating disorder, and you're like, it's a charcuterie board. Yeah, but right. Calm down. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's well, it's a charcuterie. <laughs> board. Okay. I guess what I'm okay. So before I was saying, I can't remember if this was off mic or not, but I was saying that like one of my sort of hatery opinions is when people are nostalgic about that era of rom-com something that is not discussed is how many of them are very bad like truly yeah. very bad. I tried and no offense if I, people like this movie I tried rewatching How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days oh it's it oh. horrible horrible yeah. I tried Unwatchable. to watch that and I was like it's it's <laughs> it's also so everything is so regressive it's so it's, regressive it's like dark it's sort of like oh it remind it honestly brings up like trauma yes. it's like oh this used to be culture and and this was like how you were supposed to act as a man and how you're supposed to act as a woman well, in a yes. way that was psychotic. Well, it's also yeah. like before Matthew McConaughey became an ironic version of himself, he was just like hot muscle guy. Right. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Like there was no irony in the, in her being like, mm, I want man. And then, him, <laughs> and then him just like being like muscly and Southern. <laughs> yeah. And sort yeah. of Republican coded. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is so funny to me that he. I think he write a, he writes about that in his book, right? That he like started turning down millions of mm -hmm. dollars because he didn't want to do rom coms anymore. Yeah, yeah, he wanted to do Lincoln Lawyer. <laughs> right, which thank God, <laughs> thank God, yeah. in Dallas Buyers thank Club. God. So you sort of think yeah, I, I I like the phrasing that he's an ironic version of himself. Well, I think okay, it's sort of like one of the few paths available to people of that stature. Of like, I mean, it it's like. Very different thing, but Nicolas Cage too is an ironic version of himself. Like yeah. so many yeah. people that had a big, big, big moment. Um, Nicolas Cage is different because he has more fun with it and he's more aware yeah. of it, and he sort of has always been an ironic version of himself. But I'm thinking like even Brad Pitt is going through an extended period of being like, "Isn't it funny that I'm Brad Pitt?" Yeah. Isn't it funny that everyone's still okay with me, even exactly. though my kids don't speak to me? Yeah. Yeah. What's it's sort of like, so scary. Oh, it's kind of like humor. Doing a humorous character as a defense mechanism a little bit. Oh yeah. 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 And it works so well. Yeah. It's weird that like, it's like, oh, okay, well, he's self-aware. So what am I going to say? Right. Yeah. How do you guys feel about When Harry Met Sally? Love. Well, I love When Harry I Met Sally. I love it, but so, so problematic. Yeah. It is just men and women can't be friends the whole time. 
and then is ultimately the case at the end. I mean, what's tough is like, yes, it's problematic, but it's so refreshing to have very clear cut like ideology. You're just sort of like this. That talk about like set a punchline. It's like okay, thesis: men and women can't be friends. Yeah, what is the outcome? I also and I also kind of like. I feel like the uh, like Harry is sort of like. He is supposed to be an asshole. So, like, him yeah. having this opinion isn't like, this is the correct opinion. That's true. It's That's sort of true. like, this guy's an asshole. But it is the correct op- opinion as proven by the film. <laughs> right, right, and right. And they do end up together. So, it's like, how big an asshole is. I <laughs> actually think you're pointing to something really interesting, which is like, it's almost like rom coms <laughs> basically like ironically confirm conservative family values yeah. Yeah. ideas. Like, yeah. it's sort yeah. of like, the ideal rom-com is what? It's like a career woman that doesn't think she needs a man, but twist, she does. Yep. <laughs> like it's yeah. literally, that is what the humor is. Yeah. Well, that's and, sort of the plot of Madam Web as well. The, well, of course. I mean, Did one of my favorite. Did you see Madam Web? Oh, we uh, saw. <laughs> we have spent what? like five episodes talking about Madam <laughs> Web. <laughs> Taylor, this is coming out, this is going to come out in a month or two, yeah. and this will be so irrelevant. <laughs> and I'm going to take this time and say, run, don't walk. Yeah, oh yeah, you have to go while it's still in theaters. <laughs> okay. <laughs> IMAX if possible. Oh yeah, we love Madam Web. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, tr- talk about a great Sydney Sweeney performance. <laughs> but yes, no, but I, and, but don't you think, like, that is sort of like the humor, and I think that's almost okay, because it's like, we should have enough of a, I don't know, it's not like people are being brainwashed, like, the yeah. audiences are smart enough to be like, this is a movie, it's not like I'm going to leave and quit my job as a woman and try to marry Matthew McConaughey. Right, and it is a job. And it is yeah. a woman. <laughs> being a yeah. woman. But when yes. I was, like, a kid, I did feel like... yeah. I do think rom-coms are a big reason that for years I was like, I need a man to choose me. Totally. Totally. Which is humiliating. Yeah. Yeah. What was your favorite? I mean, When Harry Met Sally is my number one. I watch it every time it like even kind of rains. Yeah. Like I am... I love that movie. I know I'm criticizing it. It but. really shocked me because I, I had... I watched it for the first time maybe like five years ago or something. Same. I was And late. it was like... Like I was like, it reminded me like a, a few other movies have happened where I'm like enjoying, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying. And then like at the end, I'm just crying, mm-hmm. like fully yeah. crying and can't stop. And it was like, wow, it really yeah. got me. Yeah. Um, Sweet Home Alabama. That I haven't rewatched as an adult. Does that hold up? I, I, I actually it. think it does hold up. Really? Yeah, I watched it a few months ago. Sh- I was also on the road, so yeah, maybe yeah, I was course. I was sad I had road glasses on. I want to know what do you feel is like like are the queer rom-coms translating well is there a way is there something lacking from the the sort of adaptations for the queer ones a lot of people hated happiest season that's true but the thing is queer people hate i'm saying this as a queer person (laughs) who hates everything i'm not i'm not like judging but it's like yeah it's different like it's difficult to be like this is a crowd pleaser for gay people yeah because they're like Oh, you think I'm gonna be pleased? Right. You think I'm gonna be pleased? <laughs> you think I'm gonna be pleased? <laughs> like, truly, don't you? Think, no, like, it's just like a different yeah. thing. Like, the straight people, it's like the way that straight. Here's what I'll say about straight people: the, their <laughs> flexibility is actually really commendable because so often it'll be like a woman drags a guy to something, a guy drags a woman to a sports game, and everyone just has to sort of be okay with like seeing something they don't actually like in yeah. a way that actually is harder for gay people. Like I cannot well, imagine someone dragging me to an event that I fully don't like that I fully don't want to be at and me being like, sure, sweetie. <laughs> no, I'm right. impossible. I, I need yeah. to be doing something I want at all times. <laughs> it's horrible no, to no, take no. me home for like Thanksgiving Literally. is a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, what are they serving? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Truly. And it's like, well, I maybe can make it. Like, I remember I used to, I dated someone for six years who was from LA and we would visit his, visit their parents in LA and they would be like, oh, we're going on a hike. It's really like a 25 minute hike. And I'd be like, I don't really like hiking. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like, if you need someone to do this with you. We can find someone. Yeah. 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 We can well, find someone to do There's that. something about like, okay, so when you like start p- being gay. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. okay, well, I'm I'm deciding to like pursue what I know I like despite all the odds. Here I go. Mm-hmm. And then it's sort of like, and now you want me to do something. Compromise I, more? You want me to compromise? <laughs> I just told you I'm not compromising anymore. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, I'm being my full, I'm showing up as my full authentic self and now I have to go on a hike. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah. I do think, like, I even feel like then it becomes you almost get rewarded for like the more, like, 
like self uh, fulfilling path you go down where you're like, yes. I want now I'm learning I'm this, I'm this, I'm this. And it's like, oh, cool. I'm just I'm in such a journey of self discovery where straight people like to be like, I'm done. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. like straight people almost have the opposite where they're like, yeah, I was really into like punk music when I was 22. But now I just uh, cook. <laughs> now I just turn on wow, the, that's the brutal. news and cook. No, it really is true. It's it's it I is turn a, on the news and cook. <laughs> there is something sort of refreshing about it. Like it's sort. I think if you're straight, you basically until the age of 26, 27, you're like, okay, well, that was fun. <laughs> now time to go to church, I guess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's such a different vibe. Yeah, but but so to go back to the rom com thing, I do yeah. think there's just a different like critical environment that you're releasing a queer movie into than a straight movie into, mm. and all and like you sort of the politics of queer relationships are so raw, like post marriage equality, like in the midst of everyone figuring out, um, you know, new ways of being in relationships and new ways of loving one another and whatever, it is very difficult to make like a very simple romantic movie that everyone can agree is right. good. Yeah. Whereas yeah. the the traditions are just way more like well-trodden for straight people. And it's like, yeah. sure, you can make a regressive rom-com or a feminist rom-com, but it all sort of has the same makings. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas like the gay guy rom-com, you're like, so are they open or not? Exactly. <laughs> so are they open or not? Why are they? Wh why? So one of them is muscular, or are both of them muscular? So he's into muscle guys. He's into muscle guys. <laughs> so then why what, was he dating a non-muscle guy? Right. Beginning? What? What is the age gap? <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, so he's a Hell's Kitchen gay. This doesn't speak to me. This doesn't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what movie's great that just came out? My girlfriend and I saw it yesterday. Is Love Lies Bleeding? I want to see that. Wait, it's is that the Christmas so yes, yes, I've been it's wanting so to, good. I've been wanting to go to that alone while I'm here as a sort of like punk rock. Like I'm going alone I'm to a really lesbian alone. movie. Oh my god, it's so good, and it's like it's under two hours, which nothing is anymore, and it should have been another thirty minutes. Like it flies by. It's so so good. I pretty well, much I think Kristen Stewart should win a Presidential Medal of Freedom. <laughs> I think she <laughs> should definitely get an Olympic gold medal. I think she should get an Olympic gold medal for lesbian, and I think she. It, it, it really is commendable that she she'll do one big budget thing because she needs to because she has to you know make money, but then she always goes back to. Does she need to make money though? Because Twilight, That's a great I don't think she actually does need to make money. Yeah, okay, this is interesting. And what's the last like That's big good, budget thing that's she's a good done? Point. Charlie's Angels, which was a huge flop, oh, famously. I oh, like Charlie's big... Angels. I like I, I liked her in it. Yeah, I should say. Yeah. I never saw it. I was just like yeah, you're well, wearing so many you wigs. And the rest of America. <laughs> she <laughs> wore so many outfits. <laughs> sure, it was sure. so fun. That is like you know it failed when I didn't see it. Like yeah. that's no me for too because that is yeah. sort of a classic thing that maybe you and I would see like as a joke. And yeah. we didn't even do that. That's tough. I mean, she was in those Snow White movies. That was a long time ago. Was that a big deal? I never saw that. I think there were there were big. Budget at least. Yeah, there were yeah two they were big budget. Yeah. And then she had the affair or something. There was yeah, like some yeah, scandal. Yeah, yeah. I don't even think it was a full affair, but yeah, there was drama. There was drama. But I do like that she is a real. Uh, she's just a real indie girl at heart. And you know what's beautiful about this podcast is that you can find footage of me two years ago being like, I hate Kristen Stewart. Really? Yeah. Really? Well, I was rewatching the Twilight movies, mm. and I was like, these. Like trying to like watch them sort of ironically, and I was like, yeah. no, this is annoying to watch. They're He's not like, for you. No, they're not. Say that. And they're by the not. way, <laughs> talk about movies that you think would you could ironically watch, but they're actually just bad. Yeah. Yeah. I look. <laughs> I was eleven when those books came out, so I read them oh, in yeah. real time. Sure, sure, sure. So I can ironically watch them with friends of mine who are the same age who went through the same thing and yeah. go do you remember when you this know. was our whole personality for two years yeah. like when we were children and this did it for us because it's fast especially if you like grew up religious and there's all this sure. weird absence well, like in it yeah yeah propaganda. yeah yeah it's it's crazy <laughs> yeah and just knowing how much he hated doing it like it's i think they all hated doing yeah. it yeah it's like 50 well i've never seen this either but it's like 50 shades of gray how famously all of them hated i mean i tried to watch that that's terrible really? i can't get yeah. through i couldn't get through that one i mean was but i never read the books yeah so you know there you go it wasn't like and those books were twilight fan fiction isn't yes. that yes yes Yes. That like spun out into We are this. so far from the shallow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But, okay. But yeah, now I, I just let the record show. Yes. Now I, you like her. Now I like Have her. Have you seen Personal Shopper? 
No, you told me that when I hated on her she last goes time. To, two years it's a she scary goes, movie, right? Yeah. Um, well, it's scary. sort of like more moody than scary. She goes to France and talks to the ghost of her brother. <laughs> Who's okay. Dead. Oh. Um, well, that's why he's a ghost. ghost. That's why he's a ghost. Yeah. No, he's not just a ghost identified alive person. He's dead. Um, and she's also a personal shopper, so she's constantly going through these gorgeous dresses <laughs> for her, I mean, for her big fun. client. Um, okay. Okay. Rom coms. Rom coms. I feel that we've covered a lot. Yeah. I'm trying to think of like what we're missing yeah. in the general. Well, okay. Something about rom coms is the idea of charisma. Like, it really mm. is, like, such a showcase for just personality. Like, think of a Julia Roberts or a Meg Ryan or who are the other iconic? Sure. Richard Gere, like, it's, even Matthew McConaughey. It's too. about, like, falling in love with the actor. Yeah. yeah. Reese Witherspoon. I mean, yeah. and I do, something I feel like people say now, which I guess I semi-agree with, is that because everything is so like AI generated and like someone is like scrolling through TikTok trying to find what girl has the most likes. Right. <laughs> like where, where is the raw star power of a Julia Roberts? Who has it these days? Who has it? I think Zoe Deutsch has it. You do? I really do. That is fascinating wow. to me. Yeah. And I'm not saying I, I actually the reason I'm saying it's fascinating is because Zoe Deutsch is one of those names I've been hearing for truly 20 years. Really? Yeah. Could not think of what her face looks like. I'm, I'm literally really? going to Oh Google yeah. And no. You'll to. see it and be like oh my gosh of course. She did a rom-com. Yeah. Like a Christmas rom-com. Okay. Which is called something from Tiffany's, I think. Okay. And that was cute. Okay, interesting. I thought that was cute. Why do they always have the Wikipedia pictures be like... I See, I, I recognize her only from Set It Up uh, because yeah. I remember her being in Set It Up. I think she has okay, rom-com charisma. Okay, well, you heard it here first. But I don't know who else. I mean, it's hard because I feel like if somebody has it, they get pulled into doing mm. more dramatic stuff and then you're like oh they're not well gonna you know who it. has it Glenn Powell I really think oh, Glenn yeah, Powell Glenn has yeah. his presence yeah he's yeah. charming um yeah I'm like I can't think of anyone like I'm like all I can ever think of is the Euphoria girls I know course. I'm like would Zendaya is Zendaya too serious to do a, a I think she would never yeah. yeah I think so Emma Stone Ryan Gosling well of course but, I would know. say maybe those are the last two those were the like, last rom-com two. leads and of course now they're too big to do a yeah. silly rom-com oh speaking of have you seen Anne, Anne Hathaway, Hathaway. Oh, I'm excited about that one. Speaking I hope of literally people that should not be doing silly well, that was like yes. go off. I was like, what like evil contract did they sign to it's get her in crazy. here? It's actually crazy. And I celebrate it because I want to see it. I'm so excited for it. <laughs> it. Me too. Listen, I'm I'm all in. You know, it's based on Harry Styles, I guess. It's like One Direction it's fan like fiction. It's like One Direction fan I fiction. Didn't and know they got this. Anne Hathaway. And it's so well, funny. Also, I'm sorry, but like the whole thing is like Anne Hathaway literally looks like a Barbie doll. And everyone's yeah. like, that old hag is dating what? Harry Styles. That ugly bitch. Is Are people dating. saying No, that? not like people, real people, but in the movie. It's like, what? it's that the whole That's thing the is narrative? like, there's like an age difference and she's like older. And people are calling her ugly? I don't. I feel like maybe not. Okay, but you know what I mean. It's between like, the lines, it, it's like I think maybe people are like you're a little old for him, but no one's like. But you're don't you think that ugly? If Harry Styles in real life dated, although I guess he did date someone older, and people yeah. were rude to her. Yeah, and she's also stunning and gorgeous. But they were mad at her because they were like, "You left your husband for him," right? Or something, yeah. Which I and don't even she know also true. I mean, I, I love her to death, but doesn't have the charisma of Anne Hathaway, unfortunately. Who does? Who, Who does? does? Who, Who does? among us? Who among, Who among us? us? Yeah. That was an interesting. She did a few. Remember Love and Other Drugs? I loved Love and Other Drugs. They were again. That's they were great sheer, together. They're so. Yeah. Okay. Here's a question: Have you seen the breakup starring Jennifer Aniston and Vince Vaughn? I have not. Do you, have you? No. Okay. So I have no idea if it holds up. But I've seen so. clips of it on TikTok. <laughs> Posted by straight people who are like <laughs> really. So the whole like innovation of that movie and any you know spoiler is that they are they remain broken up at the end they yeah. don't get together, and at the time I remember being like this is the most radical work of art I've ever seen <laughs> to, like it is literally a rom com where at no point they are they break up in the beginning and the whole plot I think is that they have to still share a house so they are like just hating each other constantly trying to date blah blah there is a moment where they could get back together but they don't and then at the end I think the last scene is like six months later they ran into each other on the street and they're just sort of like good to see you I saw that on TikTok yeah <laughs> and I saw the part where she's like crying and upset with him for yeah. not trying harder that's why I'm like is that a comedy you know <laughs> that's you know it, it's a classic movie that is 
has the beats of a comedy and is marketed yeah. as a comedy, but I do agree with you. Not so much slapstick humor happening. Yeah, that feels like a relationship <laughs> film. But, some, but I think Love and Other Drugs is like that too. Like it's not laugh out loud funny. I think there's a lot. There's, he's okay. selling dick drugs. That's he's selling true. Viagra. I mean, that's just I'm like, laughing. Yeah, humor I'm right laughing. I'm <laughs> um, once again the dick is the thing that unites us all. Much like Sam Smather. <laughs> I feel um, this is one of those episodes where I'm like, damn, you really think I don't consider myself like a hermit mm-hmm. of uh, media. And I'm like, I haven't seen any of these movies. Really? I've seen uh, for almost you've all, seen all of the movies. like old ones, like the Meg Ryan ones. Sure, sure, sure. You saw You've Got Mail. I've seen You've Got Mail. Yeah. Sleepless in Seattle. I've seen Sleepless in Seattle. But yeah. You've Got Mail is such like sort of late 90s Upper West Side porn. It's, like, you're just like, if only oh, I could whole, be teleported there. I know. They also, okay, here's something that I feel is lacking. Even just the men being, like, normal hot. Normal hot yeah. doesn't exist yes. anymore. Well, right. that's everybody. It's I'm, everybody. I'm, I'm, Who is our Tom Hanks? Who's normal hot? I think, I think it might have been Glenn Powell before he got ripped. Like, set it up, he's not ripped yet. Interesting. And he's just like... You know, a good looking dude. Yeah. yeah. But someone you could imagine working near. <laughs> Having a normal job. Yeah, but then in the new movie, you're like, who's this? Yeah. Yeah. This is not, everyone was so unbelievably hot in, what's the new one called? Anyone but you. Okay. I was going to say Australia hot date. Um, <laughs> I, I like literally that was couldn't think of title. it. I literally <laughs> couldn't think of it. They're so like hot in it. It yeah. just feels uncomfortable. You know, it was also, if we're talking about recent ones, what was also, I feel like, a pivotal moment is when they tried to do one with Julia Roberts and George Clooney, like, yeah. like, oh, like a, a year ago. For older people. Yeah. I watched I it with went, my grandma. I saw oh. it in theaters. Yeah. Um, solid, you know, two and a half out of five. Like, you know. Like, they wanted to go on vacation. They wanted to go on vacation. And I'm glad they got to and go. And I <laughs> am so happy for them. <laughs> Because I was worried. I said, I know I know Julia hasn't been on vacation in a while. <laughs> Taylor, for season two of After Midnight, you have to pitch After Midnight Island Edition. Yes. After Island. After, After Island. Island. Well, once we, when we had Jeff Probst on, which everyone was fighting over. Yeah, we got, in, him. we got in big fights back, backstage. And once I met him, I understood why. He's fantastic. He's incredible. He's such a great guy. And yeah. I can't, but I cannot imagine. Do they film that on an island? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. fully on an it's island. It would be really funny island. if it was a studio. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Like it's, Big Brother. Like, nothing uh, would yeah. surprise me. Yeah. Um, no, it's an so island. So he just lives on an island all the time. Truly for like half the year. He That's just is like on an island. Crazy. It's wild, actually. Does he have a family? I think he does. And they're just on the island with him? Or maybe they're like... I should have asked him all these questions when he was like, does anyone have any questions in front yeah, of our studio yeah. audience? I should so, be like, where's your family? What's your relationship with your family? <laughs> because I How can't imagine. You see it's your easy. Kids? <laughs> Wouldn't it be so isolating to be someone like that who literally, there is no other person in the universe that has a similar job or life to him. Oh, there totally. Is, he cannot relate to, like he can't have a conversation like we can with another comedian or with another yeah. writer where it's like, yes, we are different. Maybe someone's more successful or less successful, whatever. But you can find common ground. He can find common ground with zero people. I mean, Nikki Glaser, fuck boy island. That's on an that's island. True. Oh, that's yeah. true. There you go. Yeah. Okay. And that's and it. maybe it's maybe fuck boy island and uh, deal or no deal island and survivor. It's the island yeah. Yeah. multiverse. The island multiverse. Yeah. That sounds really nice. You know, putting something on an island Really great business idea, ultimately. Well, it's such We a, should do our podcast on an island. <laughs> if we did Stradio Lab Island Edition, yeah. I would be having a blast. Well, <laughs> see you in Greece. <laughs> yeah. I, I, one thing I want to say about Jeff Probst being there also, which I was addicted to, was that, like, you know, we everything is, like, non-judgmental towards the guests. And then Jeff, he's so used to being like, well, you're losing and you're winning. Yeah. And he, he like, did that. And I was like, this is intoxicating yeah no it was really (laughs) yeah he was fantastic and so warm and just like yeah he really i felt like anybody who wasn't a survivor fan was like that's the greatest guy i've ever met yeah like i had no idea i mean you can't you can't invent like that kind of charisma that kind of uh screen presence is just once in a generation once in a generation there was a point where ismail and michelle handed him the wrong script and he was like are you guys fucking with me and i was like i can't believe i got to hear him say that <laughs> are you guys having fun oh yeah do you have any questions comments fun. concerns um no because i feel like it's fun but also 
what do I know? No, I actually do want to use this time as we as we go towards the end. Uh, I'm having a blast. It's actually I've complained about moving to LA. Right, which you should. Yeah, yeah. That was like my first question. Like yeah. the one time we all got to hang out, I was like, yeah. who hates it here? And everyone's like, you know, it's fine. I was like, safe space. And Isabel's like, I hate it. I hate yeah. it so much. It's a big adjustment, but getting used to it. But the job I actually really enjoy. Mm-hmm. It's like very fun. The room is great. We all get along really well. And in a way, because none, we didn't like. I knew Joe before, and I knew Michelle. Right, but you didn't all came know from Z-way, else. right? Yeah, yeah. And then everybody else was like strangers, and it's like, oh, this really works well. Yeah. Um, and it's fun to write for you. You're nice. very flexible, and it's cool to see you do this. I do make you explain to me internet terms. This week, I was like, what is baby? <laughs> like, what exactly <laughs> is baby? I'm like, is it like baby girl? And Sam goes, I mean. It's you're younger. It's like it's like baby girl, but you're younger. And I was like, oh, OK, great. Like, I understood. I mean, it's funny to age into being someone who actually does learn about Internet stuff, like from a show like After Midnight. Like, yeah. I remember when the original At Midnight was on being like, well, I'm on Twitter all day. So, like, this is for old. Like, I, this feels, you know, sort of like explaining something I already know or something. Mm. Whereas now, like when you explain a trend, I'm like writing it down. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I haven't (laughs) heard about this. Oh yeah. And there's so many different like pockets, especially of TikTok. Like I sent Joe Firestone uh, a trend that I've maybe only gets sent to me. Have you seen the ones where it's like, ask your friends which one you are and it's a slideshow and it's just like, different colors of green oh or like different <laughs> seasons or like one was like what's your set it's like pirate mummy you know f- fucking vampire and i've been sending her so many because i was like i was very sick last weekend and i was like i don't know if this is anything i'm really <laughs> ill but maybe this is something and then i just started sending her a lot i was like i hope you like just getting these and i go i would like to be you know i would like to be emerald i am olive unfortunately mm. like it gets very oh, addicting i mean i can see how that would be a fun thing to do God, the uh, the power of personality tests and anything personality test oriented just like yeah we that's all exactly just want to be like i pick five these five are me and that's what it is yeah. it's a personality yeah. test that you it's like don't want to take and they're getting like you would think that as we get further along in the history of the internet they would get more complicated or more interesting but it's literally becoming just people grunting at one another just sort of like which corner of the room are you yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah people are getting lazy with it people are yeah. getting so lazy but like i'm seeing have you seen the instagram ones that are like choose five and it's just like a hundred random musicians not even like it'll be like mariah carey iron maiden like <laughs> yeah oh my god that actually bums me out because sometimes i'll see like people that i think are cool do it and i'm yeah. like oh another person has fallen yeah <laughs> like, I know, I know. oh my god i've been so scared to post anything on tiktok since i started this job oh i'm, I'm sure so like I'm so intimidated by the writer's room. Like, I just want everyone to think I'm cool because everyone's like <laughs> younger and cooler than me. And I'm like, I can't do a trend. Like, my social media manager is like, let's do this trend on TikTok. And I'm like, you guys, I can't because everyone will see because it's their job to follow me. And I can't go in and show my face and just be like, yeah, we're all just working comics out here. <laughs> and I just lip synced something right. that morning. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. It's social media in general is it's a shameful place. It's, it's so real, embarrassing. It's so hard to do it it's with time tact. To, we got yeah. Move on. We gotta go yeah. back to the island, honestly. We need to go back to the island. Yeah. But like I feel like COVID was a huge shift for people being haters about like mm-hmm. posting clips online yes, for stand up yeah. because then COVID happened and it was like everybody just do what you can to stay afloat and people were shitting on, you know, those of us who were posting stuff. And then later on we're like, hey, so how who films your stuff like everybody came around and was like oh I should have been doing that because now everybody's selling tickets it's yeah. actually crazy how well it worked and I never posted clips and I'm like well now it's too late like now I it's feel it's not too late <laughs> no it's not too late unfortunately <laughs> well maybe I'll start but I'm scared I, I mean no. I honestly I kind of love that you can get great clips yourself and then you don't have to like wait for a late night set and that like I've discovered people that way just yeah. because they came up no, on reels. True. It's yeah. funny like you you th- see you know when you see someone do it poorly or when you see a friend do it you're like oh god how embarrassing and then literally as a viewer you do discover people and you're like oh wow that was great. I mean when we were going it's, on tour and like booking yes. like local local guests, comedians that's how we like found so them. We found them online. Help. What are we going to do like so go helpful. do like a scouting trip and find you know Seattle comedians? No we, we just like look them up online. Yeah what are you going to do ask people <sighs> and then they're just going to tell you their friend right. and then they Right. and it's terrible and yeah. I'm like okay I've asked the wrong person <laughs> no we need to really um, this is the, 
we're bad we're at bad. our jobs. We're bad at our jobs. <laughs> okay. We always have been we always and we always will been. be. Um, I mean, that's part of our and charm. that's part of our charm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm always impressed by people who succeed and didn't have to do any of the embarrassing things yeah. that the yeah, rest of us had totally. to do. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the more I've always been like, yeah, I was like, I'm gonna do be that, and it's like, no, you're not. Like, it's <laughs> it's you got to be embarrassing. You have to be embarrassing. There's no way around. Cheers it. to being embarrassing. Yeah, cheers to that. Cheers. Hey, to I'll that. drink to that. <laughs> um, um, Taylor, any final thoughts on rom coms? Ooh, I'm trying to think if I forgot any. It does seem crazy that there aren't more queer ones. I mean, mean, I think they're really rushing them out. Like, we've even mentioned so many, and all of them came out in the last, like, three years. Well, I I know. That's what I'm saying. Besides those. There was that one, is it Maybe I Do, the one with uh, Piper Parabo? Yes. I know exactly what you're... Oh, person God. at her wedding. Yes, yes, yes. And the cover is her holding the hand yes. of the other woman behind the groom. Yes. Um, uh, whatever I can't remember Je- Kissing Jessica Stein is great also there used to be just like an industry of literally like you know you go to the LGBT section of a, of a blockbuster yeah. and there would be like there's this one called Trick and it's with like two gay guys that are dating and one of them is friends with Tori Spelling and like <laughs> there is, I mean that's a premise that's a premise <laughs> that's a premise <laughs> there were like gay m- movie festival like it, there was this like there were these like B movies that were basically yeah. like gay rom-coms that would never be shown at like AMC, right? But yeah. it was you know our culture. <laughs> it was a beautiful culture. And it was a beautiful culture. Mm-hmm. Um, should we do our final segment? We should. I'm. I don't have one, but I will think of one. I have one. Okay, Taylor. Our final segment is called shoutouts, and in this segment, we pay homage to the grand straight tradition of the radio shoutout by giving a shout out to anything that we are enjoying, people, places, things, ideas. Um, imagine it's 2001, and you're at TRL shouting out to your squad back home, and we will go first. I actually have one that you better believe is catheter related. Oh. Are you ready? Let's do it. What's up, freaks, losers, and perverts around the globe? I want to give a huge shout out to Baggy Pants. That's right. <laughs> baggy Pants are trendy, 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 and I could not be more grateful because, you know, if I had a catheter in 2007, oh honey, I'd be suffering. You'd be seeing the pouch through the damn skinny jeans. But because I have Baggy Pants, I'm completely camouflaged. No one knows a thing. Um, I th- sort of, you know, when he told me I would have to wear this till Monday, I thought, well, this is the worst news I've ever received in my life. And now I'm sort of like, whatever, who cares? I can wear this for another week. Let me out and about. No one has any idea. I don't need to pee because of, and I can't. And um, I actually, well, but sort of been peeing the whole time into my pouch and my baggy, baggy pants. So shout out to baggy pants. I love you. And shout out to trends. Woo. Woo. Um, oh, wait, should I change my last? Okay, I'm going to do two. Get ready. Oh, my God. Um, What's up, chicas and chicos out there in all the land, especially everyone nominated for Academy Awards tonight? I want to give a shout out to, first of all, um, uh, the idea of any soad salad. I have been eating so many fast, casual salads while here because I'm just sort of on the go as a busy, professional, successful comedian. And I have become partial to the tender greens and soad salad. We're talking seared tuna. We're talking potatoes. We're talking olives. We're talking green beans. I repeat, green beans. The French <laughs> snapped when they come, came up with that one. And my second shout out is I want to give a shout out to the actress Vera Farmiga. As I said before we started recording, I recently watched Up in the Air, and was and which she's incredible. And, and she's also famously in the departed. We need to bring her back and get her out of sort of the horror movie. I, she's great in horror movies, but we need a we need her in a sort of um, I'm trying to think who like an older woman who's a boss and who's evil. But then at the end, you figure out it's because she had to sacrifice so much. We need a big a good meaty role for Vera Farmiga. We need to get her in a in a you know Steven Soderbergh movie. We need we need a Vera uh, Renaissance. A virusance. A virusance. And that is how I feel. And shout out to Up in the Air. And shout out to Jason Reitman, the director, who directed both Up in the Air and the film I recommended last week, which is Young Adult. (laughs) 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 Amazing shout out for me. No, that was really good. You couldn't tell we've been doing this for four years. It's always oh, okay. nice to, yeah, Do whenever you're up, ready. Okay. Uh, ooh, can I come up with something from the episode? Absolutely. Or do I have to oh, do something else? We always come up with them it's on very the loose. Spot. It's yeah. very loose. Okay, tell. great. Very loose. Um, I'm going to give a shout out. I'm going to give a shout out to two things. One, getting enough protein, which is unfortunately very helpful. I really didn't want that to be true, but it is. <laughs> fucking sucks. And I'm also going to give a shout out to Kristen Stewart for mm. doing such a great job in Love Lies Bleeding and making Sam come around as a hater. Yeah. yeah. One Sam over, yeah. very impressed. 
Shout out to Chris and Stuart. We love you so much. I can't wait to see Love Lesbian. I know that's going to be fun. And there's the other lesbian movie that Ethan Cohen directed. Do you know about that? Oh, the doll, Drive Away Dolls? Drive Away Dolls. That was not good. Oh. oh? Okay. And which was so disappointing. That's, that's about Yeah, it was really disappointing. But I still kind of want to see it. That's how I felt, yeah. but maybe wait. I heard it's it. funny, but no. Okay. <laughs> Got it. I, it, was cool. <laughs> it was one of those things where I'm like, this was so close. Yeah, yeah, yeah You know, yeah. where it just didn't yeah. come together, which was that's Maybe so the two upsetting. brothers need each other, the Coens. I think so. I think Where's so. that rom-com? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Where's brotherly love by the yeah, code? That's how we queer it. Incestual. <laughs> well, Taylor, this has been an absolute delight. Watch, I'll say it, watch After Midnight on CBS. Yes. Thank you so much for the plug. Thanks and for doing this. Yeah, I really appreciate tour. it. Yes, whenever that happens. Whenever that happens. And checking out from Straighter Lab HQ. Bye. <laughs> Bye.